So how's the tour going so far? Uh, the tour's great. Nice. I love it. Yeah, where are you guys at now? Uh, right now we're in Sacramento. Uh, but we, uh, so yeah, next week we come to San Diego. Yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, for like, what, almost two weeks? Or like in every place you go, you're almost there for like 10 days, two weeks. Yeah, I think our, we, our shortest stays are always about nine or 10 days. 10 days? Yeah. We always do like a week and a half or so at least. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that that's just because like you guys are, uh, Frozen's just so freaking popular? That's part of it. It's also a really big show. Um, it takes a lot of time to load in and out of a theater, you know. Um, so so that's part of it as well. I think uh, if we're going to spend all the time to load in and load out, we might as well sit down for a bit and and give every, give as many people a show as possible. Yeah. When you guys load in, uh, what's the process for you, the actors? Do you guys have to go in and like uh, reblock everything just in case something happens? Or No, we uh, I mean, it's pretty easy for us, uh, uh, the acting company. Um, in a new city, we show up, um, if the show is at seven thirty, eight o'clock, we show up around two o'clock and, uh, we have a, an orientation company meeting where we talk about things that might be different in this house as opposed to other houses or, uh, where our dressing rooms are or, um, you know, just little logistic things like that. And then, uh, and then we have a sound check where our, uh, our sound people tune the room and um and we hear what it sounds like in that particular venue and then we have the rest of the day off until we come back in for the show so for us for the acting company um it's really not not that hectic the crew the crew is working a lot <laughs> and really hard mm -hmm. yeah so i would think like this part olaf is like just the best thing to play i mean everyone loves him uh, he comes in, you know, chews some scenery and 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 leaves, and you know, you can go hang out for a little bit and come back on do the same thing. You know, everybody's got to pick up the pieces after you after you come you know, after you leave. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're. I mean, that's exactly right. I I love this job. I love playing this role. Um, it is so so fun. Um, it's amazing to be loved the moment you step on stage uh to have everybody sort of on your side right at the beginning and and you're right like i i come on and i'm shot out of a cannon and i get to i get to just really eat it up out there um and it's it's really fun the other thing i really love about him is is he has this amazingly positive perspective on the world he is an undeniable optimist and in every opportunity in every experience, he sees an opportunity for having fun and being joyful. Um, and so it's it's really just a, a great gift to be able to play a character like that and to be in that headspace all the time. Do you actually, like I'm an actor too, and sometimes you like, I do these roles and I'm thinking, oh, I should, you know, put this into my real life uh obviously for, for it never happens but i mean like playing somebody like olaf you know where you, you just explain like his sort of life life philosophy does that sort of affect you off off stage yes um i'm i'm very affected by i have been very very affected in a in a truly positive way um playing this role because of that that's exactly why um you know i spend i spend so much time being portraying positivity and portraying happiness and um you know um behavior like any other thing is is a skill and and like anything we do in life the more you do it the better you get at it so i've had hours and hours and hours and weeks and months of practice at being happy and looking at things as opportunities for happiness and joy and and love and and so i do i do find that bleeding over into my real life um so yeah this has been a, a monumentally beautiful experience for me you've been with the show for a while i i read it since like what i think you first auditioned in 2016 yeah i i uh, i started as the understudy for olaf um and uh, just recently took over on tour a few months ago but uh but i did i've been involved in frozen since the beginning i did the very first developmental workshop we did another workshop after that. Um, 
I was part of the out of town tryout, the pre-Broadway tryout we did in Denver. I did the entire Broadway run. And then um, when uh, when shows started opening back up uh, after the pandemic, then uh, I came out here on tour. What was your audition like uh, originally? Like, did you know anything about like puppetry when you started nope. out? No, I knew nothing. Um, my or original audition was just a regular audition. I went in, I sang a song. I um, And then to, for the understudy stuff, I, I had to read a couple scenes, but but it was really a, a standard audition. And uh, I didn't know anything about puppetry. The first time I'd ever done any puppeteering was when I had my first understudy rehearsal and I got into the puppet. And, uh, and I was depressed because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I could do it. Uh, it felt very unnatural and heavy. And I, it, I, I sometimes say it felt like I was just pushing around a pile of, of really heavy rocks. Um, and I, I, I was, I was in a deep, <laughs> deep, uh, funk cause I wasn't sure if I could handle the job. Um, but you know, you practice something, you get better at it. Like I said, you, you just kept practicing and suddenly things start to make sense. They get easier. You get to know each other. Like, so, like suddenly Olaf and I start to get to know each other and we start to feel how each other moves and, now it feels like we just dance around the stage together. Yeah, you, you're, yeah, you're, you're dancing, you're acting, you're singing, and then you're, you know, moving the. Is it kind of like this? I can. Am I even doing that right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it did feel like that at first. Now it feels very, very natural. Um, I, I, I have gotten to the point where it feels like we are working together. I, I think of. I know he's a, I know he's an inanimate object, but my, a big, big part of my job is to animate him, is to make him seem alive. And I often think of him as alive now. Um, I think of him as a partner um, or a buddy or a dance partner, really. Like that's the, the simplest way to sort of describe my relationship with Olaf. It's that I feel like we are dancing partners. Uh I have two little kids, two girls, five and three, and I've seen Frozen, Frozen 2, and the Olaf's, what, Winter, Christmas Adventure, or something like that, uh -huh. a million times each. <laughs> uh, when they hear uh, Josh Gad's voice, I mean, boom, like th the house is just, you know, or, you know, just everything goes crazy. Uh, it, and I'm sure you've heard it, like, too, but, like, does the... Did, does that like I I know you want to keep make it your own, but how does that like I know if I was going to audition for it or do the role like that voice would be inside my head the whole time. And how do you make it like your own? Yeah, it's uh, it's sort of impossible to to escape that influence. Um, and I don't know if I would want to. Um, I I don't make a conscious effort to to sound like him or not sound like him uh or to take any part of of what i know about the character already um i i just sort of approach it the way i would approach anything i go back to basics i start with my script i go for my operative words you know i do all the all the like nuts and bolts things that you do when you when you work on a role um but but i can't deny that that part of what i do must be influenced by everything that I've seen and heard and know about the character already, you know, I mean, when I walk out on stage and everybody knows Olaf, um, like they're not the only people who've known him for a long time. I have known him for a long time too, before I started working on it. So yeah, I can't, I, I can't help but be influenced by, by all that stuff. You know, you've been working on the show and uh, this role for a while now. Uh, I know like when I do something where, you know, we have rehearsal and then, you know, we, I do a show for like four weeks or a month and a half, two months, you know, something like that, whatever the schedule is. And I go back to the script all the time. You're like, what the hell's my line? What the hell's my line? How <laughs> often do you go back to the script now to like, just make sure you, you got things going on or are you just like, so, you know, do you not need to do that anymore? I don't really go back to my script very much now. I mean, it's after all this time, I could probably, I could probably dictate the script to you, but, um, but I do periodically re-examine my bits and my actions. And I, I, I do tend to, you know, I don't remember who said it, but you know, you got to kill your darlings. Um, like I, I do that 
every every few months I'll I'll pick my favorite part of the show that I do every night and change it up. Um, and I brave. well, it sounds brave. It's more heartbreaking than anything. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it what it does is it makes sure that I I continue to stay in the moment every night. Um, I I don't. I can feel myself sometimes getting after I've done something for a while, starting to get into a rhythm of it or starting to like sort of fall out of the, of, of the action of it all. And so like, that just happened to me this past week. I have, uh, I have a, a really fun bit that I do near the end of the show and it's, it always gets a great laugh and I, I love it so much, but I had started to feel myself getting into sort of a, a pattern with it that didn't have anything to do with what was actually going on state going on on stage. And I, it felt like I was singing an aria as opposed to, as opposed to playing a scene. And so I, everybody on stage was kind of looking at their watches and (laughs) yeah. So I had to re I went back and re-examined it and I was like, okay, what's the, what am I trying, what's actually going on here? And I I sort of went back to basics. That's the kind of work I do. I don't really open my script anymore because I just, I know the words so well, but I do continually re-examine what I'm doing on stage. You ever had any like mishaps with the costume? Um, I had with the costume, I've had some near misses like uh, the he's attached to me through this little rod. You know, there I have a harness on and then there's a rod that uh, that's that that clamps. It hooks into the the harness and then he attaches to that rod. Uh, his torso does. But um, it locks in with a pin and my pin sometimes is a little bit dicey, like it sometimes doesn't exactly want to work. And we're pretty good about knowing if it's in or not. But there was one time where we thought it was in and then I got off stage and I sat down and the puppet just like fell off. <laughs> and, and I thought, oh, man, I'm so glad that did not happen out on stage. <laughs> what a bunch of I mean, how, how traumatizing would that be to all those people? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're on, also on tour with your wife. Like, how did yes. you manage to book both of the like? Are you just like supremely talented? Do you know people like high up or what's what, how'd that happen? Well, we we just got lucky. Um, she she's been auditioning for the show for a while. And uh, and I had I had been part of it for a while. And and it's just it's really been a lucky break for us. And it's one of the most beautiful things about tour. Um, you know, when you're a tour can sometimes be very difficult because you know you you leave home you leave everything you love and that you're connected to back somewhere else and you always find yourself like longing for that home uh but since we're out here together it just feels like we took our home with us um so this is just it's just a beautiful thing we feel like we live on the road and um i don't feel that pull at all Nice. Say that would be like a kind of a gift, I would think. Yeah, it's definitely a gift. Uh, So as I said, I have uh, two little kids. Uh, I asked my oldest daughter, Ella, five. uh, uh, I I told her that I was going to be interviewing you. Uh, I said, I'm going to be interviewing the actor who plays all. Do you have any questions? And so this might be the most important question you'll be asked today. Or I don't know how many if you're going to do any more today, but or ever. Uh, She wants to know, does it get hot in the costume? It does. It does get hot in the costume. Um, but I'm always cold. <laughs> I run I run really, really cold. And so I really don't mind the heat. Um it can get warm, but I like it. <laughs> I mean, I love everything hot. I will tell her that. Uh and then my final question is that I love to ask uh, everybody, uh, what's been your worst audition? Oh, my worst audition. I uh, I went uh, I was auditioning for Stephen Sondheim's Assassins once, and uh, I was going. Do you know the show? Yeah, yeah. I, I was going in for the Balladeer, mm-hmm. and so I brought my guitar in, and um, I for some reason right at the end of uh, right at the right before I went in, I decided I wanted I changed what I was going to 
play. Like I was going to play something that I knew really well. And I, you know, had played before, but for some reason I decided to do something new and I went in and really, really flubbed it. I couldn't play it. I couldn't sing it. I, I got mixed up in the verses and I mean, it was, it was so embarrassing and I, I finished and it was just this like eerie stillness in the room where they they didn't know what to say and I didn't know what to say. And and, you know, they usually no matter what happens, they always say, OK, thank you. And that's your cue to leave. Yeah, but yeah. no one said anything because we were all just so horrified at what had happened. And I just like said bye and we'll hung my head as I walked out. <laughs> you know, that, I, I, I always like I tried to like do that as well. Uh, like I'll prepare like a, a new song, like a new audition song or something. And like maybe two minutes before I go in, I'm like, you know what? No, I'm just going to go back to the, old, the one I've done 8 million times. You did it the right way. Yeah. yeah you, you do it the right way. Don't go the other way where you, you try to do something brand new at the last minute. <laughs> yeah. 